let us start a new topic called commercial policy. We'll define commercial policy in a formal way later on in this video. But generally speaking, commercial policy is the policy of the government with respect to the foreign trade sector. Till now, we have looked at various foreign trade theories. And this is a list of those theories that we have looked at. And what these theories do is they explain as to why trade takes place between countries. And the second thing these theories tell us is the consequences of foreign trade on different countries as well as different sections of the society. These are some of the questions that we should be asking of different trade theories or trade models. And this is not an exhaustive list. For example, if a country produces a good, why should it buy it from other countries? Can that model explain that? Another question could be, under what circumstances should a country sell to other countries? The third one, the consequences of a country's exports on different factors of production, for example, owners, as well as workers, and also the consumers. So similarly, we should be able to identify consequences of a country's imports on different factors of production, the owners, the workers and, and the consumers. And then in an overall sense, would a country gain by exporting or importing or not? And what we have found is, generally speaking, there are gains to each country. And what we have found in terms of empirical evidence is international trade has had a positive influence on GDP. That is, international trade has led to higher levels of GDP of different countries. As far as gains from foreign trade go, the overall ones, they could be classified as static, that is uh, happening at a point in time. And most of these models like Smith's model and Ricardo's model, what they show is the welfare of a country improves by engaging in foreign trade, static gains. And as far as dynamic gains go, Competition from around the world forces companies to become innovative. And as they become innovative, they'll come out with new products and also result in cost-cutting methods. So that should also help a country's GDP. Another important contribution of foreign trade is the exchange of ideas or exchange of knowledge. And through that, all of us become better off. And that also has been shown to have a positive impact on a country's GDP. So the generally speaking, the consensus has been, for most part, foreign trade has had a positive influence on countries' GDP. So we know that foreign trade has a positive influence on GDP, of course, under circumstances. But then we also find government interference in foreign trade. And this is also a fact of life. And there are several reasons as to why a government may choose to, to interfere with foreign trade. One of the reasons traditionally has been the government needs money to finance its expenditure on different things like defense, construction, and so on. So they may impose taxes on exports and imports to raise revenue for the government, which could be needed for government spending. Another reason that has been advocated is if domestic industry is hurt by foreign competition, the government may just in intervene to protect employment. Or another reason that has been advocated is, and that's where the government interferes, is to protect strategic industries, for example, nuclear, defense, or maybe space industry. Another reason could be maybe you do not want to trade with a country which has human rights violation, purely out of ethical reasons. Or you may find some countries where you have unequal labor laws, where child labor is being exploited. And you might have heard of sweat workshop. And there the country may decide not to permit that in terms of foreign trade. Another reason is there are different environmental standards 
in different countries. And for example, if the environmental standards are very stiff in the US, what the companies could do here is they could move to their production to another country where environmental standards are lax because if you comply with the environmental standards it raises the cost of production and in order to save that money these companies uh, relocate and start producing in countries where environment is not an issue or it's very lax or they have lower environmental standards these kind of industries are called dirty industries where where country companies move the industries from a country which has high environmental standards to a country which has low environmental standards another reason as to why the government may interfere is it may find unfair trade law for example there might be copyright violations and things like that for example if technology comes company comes up with a software countries around the world can simply copy it and this will hurt the business in the country in which this software was developed so we need to take care of these unfair trade practices and there are international trade laws which do that but the government may decide to interfere in such a case one of the important reasons as to why countries may interfere with foreign trade is because we have rich countries and we have poor countries and poor countries want to become richer over time and so they would like to invest in industries but when they do it initially they'll face and if we have open foreign trade the foreign competition can just prevent these new industries in poor countries to grow and that could be difficult so once again in this case we may have government interference and so these are some of the reasons as to why the government may interfere with foreign now let us define commercial policy in a formal way commercial policy is a set of actions taken by the government to influence the volume and the composition of trade flows exports as well as imports and these policies generally create barriers to trade there are two types of trade barriers one is called the tariff barrier which is essentially a tax on exports or imports and as far as the us goes the us constitution says that the us government cannot put a tax on exports the only place where it can put taxes as far as foreign trade goes is imports so tariff barriers then we have non tariff barriers and there are the or these are non tax barriers to foreign trade and there are different types of them for example we could have an import quota which simply is the physical amount of goods that can be imported into a country for example the us may decide to import only 1 million pairs of shoes from around the world another example of non tariff barrier is vers and vers stand for voluntary export restraint now this is something like an import quota but this quota is now fixed by the exporting nation on its own the exporting nation says we are going to export these many cars into the us and that is all and so this is called voluntary export restraint and these quotas or the limitation on exports are imposed by the exporting nation then other non tariff barriers could be health and safety standards or government procurement policies for example by us products only and all these also have an impact on volume and composition of foreign trade so we know the definition of commercial policies and there are two types of barriers one is called tariff barrier the other one is called non tariff barriers as far as tariffs go we can classify them into three one is called ad valorem tariff which is simply a fixed percentage on the value of the good for example we want to import 
a pair of shoes worth $100 and the government may say there's a 5% duty on that. And so you'll end up paying $5 on $100 worth of shoes. This is different from a specific tariff, which is a fixed amount of tax on each unit traded. For example, if you are buying a pair of shoes, whether they cost $100 or $10 or $1,000, you just pay a flat tax. It could be just $5 per pair imported. And then we have compound tariff, which is a combination of ad valorem and specific tariffs. Now let us look at an actual example of a tariff schedule of the US, say in 2008. Now each item which is exported or imported into a country is classified under HS code. And HS stands for harmonized system of representing a particular item. So this number identifies that we are looking at pairs. And pairs are being looked at in terms of kilograms. Now look at this part, rates of duty. Rates of duty, look at this, this is 35%. And this is the maximum tariff the US can impose on pairs coming from any part of the world. And most of the time, this is imposed on countries which are not a friendly trading partner of the US. It could be North Korea, and in earlier times it was Cuba. Then we have rates of duty general, 15.3%, which is lower than 35%. Now, when we say rates of duty general, this is a tax on what are called MFN countries or most favored nations. These are essentially friendly trading partners of the country under consideration. In our case, it is the US. Then we have this middle column, which represents rates of duty special. And here, imports from this group of countries enters the US tax-free. A is stands for GSP, and we'll explain this in the next slide, what GSP means. CA stands for Canada, so we have Canada here. And these are, again, a bunch of countries with which the US has special trading arrangement. In the previous slide, I referred to most favored nation or the MFN clause. And this is the formal definition of MFN. A country confers status upon another country by agreeing not to charge tariffs on that country's goods that are any higher than those imposed on the goods of any other country. Now, most favored nation clause is generally applied to countries that are members of WTO or the World Trade Organization. Then I also referred to GSP or which stands for Generalized System of Preferences. This was essentially done to help exports of developing or poor countries. So what is GSP? It's a system in which industrialized countries charge preferential lower tariff rates on goods from certain developing countries, GSP. So you should know these definitions. And now this completes our initial lecture on commercial policy. Thank you for your time.